Uh, I, I'm uh, uh, speaking to my uh, amendment, uh, which is very simple. It's uh, uh, re requiring uh, the proposals from Baroness Hayter that we suspend our standing orders to be rejected and to treat uh, this bill in the same way as we would treat uh, any other bill. Now, um, I appreciate the points that have been made about the urgency of this matter and the consideration of this matter, but as I've already indicated, um, it would have been perfectly possible for us to consider the second reading of this bill today and for us to consider the committee stage on Monday, which would have meant that people had a chance to absorb the arguments, to uh, treat it uh, properly, uh, and uh, to, to put down amendments. As it is, it's going to be extremely difficult for people to put down amendments for both the committee stage and the report stage, and it is a vitally important bill. Uh, now, um, it was suggested uh, by the noble baroness that this was some kind of partisan exercise by leavers. Um, I have to say, actually, um, those people who are jeering have probably not read the bill, because if you read the bill, you will find that the bill actually makes it much more difficult for the Prime Minister to reach an agreement on her extension because she has no authority. She has to come back to the House of Commons uh, if um, uh, something is proposed which is not uh, as she has proposed. Uh, and it actually makes the process for those who wish to avoid uh, no deal and w wish to see this uh, carried through uh, speedily and effectively more difficult. Now, it is passed through the House of Commons with one vote without uh, uh, amending that very basic point. And what this House is very good at is reading legislation and putting down amendments and agreeing sensible conclusions. It was impossible for the other place to do this given the timetable uh, which, was, um, uh, which was set. Uh, and when you have the Secretary of State, um, uh, uh, Stephen Barclay, who I think has done a magnificent job in very difficult circumstances, when you have him complaining that he's only got a few minutes in order to address these matters, something has gone very awry. And I was very struck and indeed moved by what he had to say uh, at, the, uh, at 7 o'clock um, last night in the House of Commons. He said, we are passing the bill in haste and do not have adequate time to debate it in the manner that I would like us to. There is only one minute left on the clock. There are problems with the speed of its passage the constitutional principle of it and the way it will interact with any decision reached by the Council that differs from the earlier decision taken by the House. I hope that the constitutional experts in the other place will address some of the Bill's flaws. It is because of those defects that the Government will oppose the Bill and I urge members to oppose this defective Bill. Now, if ever there was an, an invitation from a Secretary of State to ask this House to do its constitutional duty, that is it. And in the most appalling circumstances, where the time for debate was very limited and where the thing was rammed through the House of Commons in nine hours. So all my amendment is doing is saying, please, can we actually do our duty and carry out the proper scrutiny of this bill uh, and um, reject uh, the suggestion by Baroness Hayter that it all has to be done in haste. And it's not just the Secretary of State who's expressed concern about this. I mean, concerns have been raised about the speed and also the precedent which would be created, which would undermine our ability to govern this country. I mean, that's pretty serious. I mean, the concern has been expressed by the chairman, or chair, sorry, chairs of the European Scrutiny Committee, the Procedure Committee, and the Select Committee on Public Administration and Constitutional Affairs. Now, this House cannot ignore that and just say, um, well, we're not going to have proper debate. It's all a filibuster. These are, this is what we're here for. And if, we, if we're not actually capable of doing that, what is the point of us? What is the point of having 11, 100 people on the Liberal benches if they're not actually carrying out their constitutional duty, yeah, which yeah. is to be guardians of the Constitution and to scrutinise legislation? and to hold the government, in this case Sir Oliver Letwin and his chums, uh, to account. I, I have to say to the, to, I, I almost uh, made the point to the uh, noble lady Baroness Hayter, she's really sitting in the wrong place today. She should be sat here. She should be sat here because she's acting, she's acting as if she is the government. And, and that is an extraordinary thing for this House to do. It shows complete contempt for our constitution 
and the ways in which uh, we operate. Uh, and uh, I believe um, there are also other issues uh, which we need to have time to consider. Uh, the Speaker um, of the House of Commons, um, uh, uh, who has uh, made uh, some uh, interesting uh, rulings um, and uh, uh, has uh, taken the view uh, that this uh, bill does not require a money resolution. Well, I, I mean, I look at, the, I look at this bill and uh, if the Prime Minister goes and asks for an extension uh, to a particular date and the European Union turns around and says, yeah, you can have your extension, but you've got to pay us another £30 billion, pounds, um, does that not involve expenditure? And does it not commit the Prime Minister as a matter of law to accept that? And yet it doesn't require a money resolution? And why doesn't it require a money resolution? Because if it required a money resolution, the other place would not have been able to send it here. So there's a piece of chicanery going on here. And it is up to this House to scrutinise that. And people are watching. Time and time again, they have been promised. We'll be leaving on the 29th of March. I won't go through the whole litany of, of things. Uh, and the uh, a pantomime uh, which they have seen in the other place has done huge damage to the standing of Parliament, whichever side of this argument you're on. Please, please, let this House do its duty and carry out its duty in a way that will be respected by the public. And that involves us not actually setting aside the important standing orders which we have, which are the guardians of ensuring that this matter is uh, dealt with properly. I beg to move.